Okay, so good morning, everybody. My name is Bri Hatch. Uh, I'm work persona. I am a founding engineer at uh, Dropzone AI. Um, Non-work persona. Uh, I'm a Linux geek. I am a Unix geek. I'm a geek. I'm a Vim guy. I am somebody who can't stay away from the computer for any length of time. If I'm on vacation, I might not do work, but I'm going to get my geek on. Um, for anybody watching the recording, we apologize if there is a weird humming sound coming from above. This is obfuscation games. This is an experimental talk. We are going to try to have some audience participation. We're going to be showing things. You're going to try to figure out what you see. They will not come out fully formed. Um, I'm going to ask folks to, you know, as you think you figure it out, you know, keep that inside for a moment until more people in the room have figured it out. But hopefully, we're going to jump in. And it'll be clear what we're doing. What tool is this? I have taken a large bunch of output and stripped down a ton of it. So the question is, what tool is this? I'll give you a hint. It's a standard Unix slash Linux tool. If you think you have an idea, raise your hand. At this point, probably shouldn't have a great idea. Let's, uh, let's bring in a little bit more. That really didn't bring in a lot more, did it? A couple more lines up here. A uh, bunch of numbers. If you think you have an idea, give me a wink. It looks like more stat stuff. Who I see is one hand thinks they might have a clue. Here's a lot more now. I'll give you a hint. Those numbers in the upper right might jog your memory. Super hints here. That second line. I'm seeing some people nodding. I'm seeing some people nodding. Raise your hand if you think you know. OK, I've got more than half the room. Let's go a little faster. Uh, total, free, used. This is the last chance. Who wants to say what they think this tool is? Anyone, say it out loud. Yes. yes. It's top. Oh, no. yeah. This is top. Top tells you what? What does top do? Pointing you over there. Tells you what is running your most CPU. Like your yeah. Busiest process. List a bunch of processes you've got, tells you which one is, you know, in this case it's sorted by the number of CPU okay. usage. So showing you what's uh, greedy on my machine, how much memory are each of these using? You know, what's you know, system wide, what's the users versus system versus niceness, and like what kind of stats can I get to figure out why is my computer slow? So you're a Vim guy, what's Emacs doing so? That's a great question. <laughs> Inside this top output are some mistakes. Some things that are wrong. Everyone take a minute. See if you can figure out what in here is not right. You already alluded to one of them. If I'm a Vim guy, why the heck am I running Emacs? <laughs> if you don't know the Vim versus Emacs wars, Vim is the good one, and no. Emacs is the bad one. <laughs> so can anyone point out some things that might be wrong in here? Shoot sure. up. Negative 22 steel. Then. Negative 22 yeah. steel? What is ST is stolen CPU. The hypervisor stole CPU from me. How could it possibly be giving me 22 cycles a second back? That doesn't make sense. Yeah? I didn't know Vim could boot up the OS. S explain that more. It's process one. That's the first yeah. process when you start a machine. That should be in it. Usually yeah, how is it that Vim is the in it process? That well, doesn't make sense. It should be a container that's been launching from. No, no, that, that, was, that was me manually changing yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. What else do we see that's wrong? Got some good things so far. Very observant. Is it three yeah. Numbers? Gnome shell isn't using enough memory. Gnome shell's not using enough memory. That could be. <laughs> Why is it not even more greedy? Sure. I, the three numbers at the top right don't they always decrease? These numbers typically do always decrease, okay. and also they don't typically spell out pi. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Three point one four one five nine two six five. That seems a little sketchy. What else we see? Anyone? It's been running. For a thousand days. It's been running for 1,024 days? I bet you there's a kernel bug we should have rebooted for. But that could be legit, but it's probably a bad idea. Uh, no, this is not a container. This shouldn't be process ID one. Okay, so here's the answer key. Uh, Y'all missed that there's more than 86 yeah. minutes <laughs> per minute. Um, this is not a bug. You can have 60 seconds in a minute, but only you know, once every so many years. Uh, if you sum up the CPU usage, it's more than 
Um, there's your ID one. Uh, we have two processes with the same process ID. Shouldn't happen. In fact, they're by different users, just to make clear. Uh, no way in heck would I be caught dead with PHP running on my system. <laughs> um, and uh, I've almost never seen zero zombies. There's always somebody who didn't clean up. Right? Good observations, everyone. Okay, what language is this? English. English! <laughs> that part is English. Okay, don't answer yet. We got more to go through. Now it's your last chance. What do we Bash. think this is? Bash. Yeah. Bash. It's some sort of you know standard shell. Could be ZSH. So echo hello world. If you haven't been aware, hello world exclamation point. That is like the first language you write in every program. So hello world. It's Bash. In fact, if we run it dot slash hello dash world dot sh, it says hello world exclamation point. This is not a trick question. What does this do? I think you were first. Point over there. Really? And not yeah. a trick question. What's this do? Yeah, it echoes hello world immediately, and then it executes a previous command. Mm, no, no, you're cheating. You're anticipating where I'm going. That's about what I was going to say. This is not a trick question. It says hello world. It prints out hello world, exclamation point, exclamation point. Because it's literally just saying those characters. But what does this output? Oh, now you may. Now you may answer the question you were going hello to. Hello world. Uh, dot slash hello world. Dot sh. No, we'll run it. We'll say hello world twice. Exclama oh, double right. exclamation point in a normal shell program doesn't mean anything in particular. Uh, but in the command line, yeah. it means the previous mm -hmm. command. So this takes the previous command, which is dot slash hello world. It appends that to the previous hello world was there. It also actually does show you the thing it's going to run, mm -hmm. since you did some command expansion to let you know what it was. And so we see hello world dot hello world dot sh. Now, if this were really, you know, how I had done these literally one after the other, that's what it would show. Um, but in actuality, uh, I multitask. I get bored. I take side quests. Um, this is what it actually ran when I did it because I got distracted in between. <laughs> so. What was I trying to do when I was supposed to be writing my talk and I wanted to do something else? Anyone guess what I was doing? Wordle. Why would you say that? Uh, because you're running the dictionary through, uh, you wanted to eliminate a lot of letters that you had eliminated in the Wordle puzzle, but you didn't, maybe not because you didn't do dot, 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 you just select a five letter word. I was doing Wordle. <laughs> You got it right. In fact, I was like, you know, I'm just gonna take a break. My mind needs a little break. So I was doing Wordle, and I was like, I like Linux fests, cool, you know, I get a lot of good letters. Uh, hacks, build, tools, like, I'm getting to the last one, man. I gotta solve my work. I'm too lazy. I pull out my Linux box. How can I solve Wordle? Hey, everybody, let's go solve Wordle. This is our Wordle we're trying to solve. We got the word Linux, we got build and tools, those are the only letters we got to work with. Let's go back here. Let's, actually, I'm gonna just over here show you that we have this file called user share dict words that has buckets and buckets and buckets and buckets and buckets of words. Um, it's got a bunch of proper nouns, start with capital letters, some that have yeah, apostrophe S. a bunch that don't have it. So using Unix tools, how can we get a list of just the five letter words? Something goes here. Go for it. Move to the end, height. Okay. Grab. Yeah. Single quote. Care dot 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 dollar because I always forget to do e grab. So. <laughs> Man after my own heart. So we're going to cat, cat user dict words. We're going to look for caret, which means beginning a line, dot, 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 and matches any single character, dollar sign. So we're going for anything that's five characters. And if you look at that, a bunch of stuff just went across my screen. I'm going to simplify this a little bit. You don't need to pipe it into grep. You can actually have grep take the pattern as a second thing, and then the file name. Again, a bunch of stuff went across the screen. If we remember, now we have all the five letter words. What should we do now? Input the correct letters. Input the correct letters. Tell me what you mean by that. Um, 
so probably where the dots are uh, in the second place, we put O. Okay, so we'll replace that with an O. And then the second to last one with an L. Second last one with an L. I had a teacher back when said, you know, do small things. Make baby, make baby grow. That's what we're doing. Little tiny, tiny increments. Now we have things where the second letter is O and the fourth letter is L. Sweet. That's still a lot of words. What's next? Yeah. Here's the things we know. Here's our wordle. What do we want to do now? Eliminate the letters that we know aren't there. So, Enix, Fest, Hacks, so let's do that. So how would we, it also starts with grep. What's the grep flag that means don't show me, but show me the others? Dash V. Dash V. There's a bracket, means any character inside here. So Enix, Fest, Hacks, VUID, T-O-T-S. Did I get and that right? Yeah, well, if you're there, there's another thing you can do with that command line. Yeah. Change the first dot in your first pattern mm -hmm. into square bracket, carrot L. Square bracket. Carrot what? L, because there's no L in that position. Mm. So there's no L here. It's something else. Bracket means anything in this character class, any of these characters. Carrot at the beginning means essentially inverse of that, so not an L. So anything that's not an L, which could match letter Q, whatever. Follow an L, follow anything, followed by an L, followed by anything, and then get rid of all the things that are Linux has buildists. And then we get this smaller list. Uh, incidentally, eh, it's probably not a going to be a uh, capital letter, right? So we can grep out those. Now we have jolly, or sorry, golly, jolly, and woolly. I gotta make a guess, one out of three. What, oh, woolly. So we actually just came up with this, which is more or less what I put in the slide. And incidentally, Linux Fest is jolly. I feel jolly, I don't know about you guys. How to hack Wordle. Okay, now I gotta get back to writing my talk. Oh, okay, uh, what language is this? Say, say it like you did last time. English. It's English! <laughs> okay, we got more than that, though. Okay, this has gotta narrow it down. What language might this be? Or maybe what is it not? Okay. How about one, what's one thing it's definitely not? Java. Java, great. Okay, hello world. Oh, I just put a backslash N in there. I'm narrowing it down. Plus. Looks like C, C++ maybe, Python? might be Python. It's got a semicolon, just added that in. What does that knock out? Not Pretty much good. knocks out Python. Yeah, you, know, you can still have the semicolon in Python. Yeah, you <laughs> abhorrent, horrible person put the semicolon in Python. <laughs> How dare you? Oh my god. Okay, uh, printf. Oh, what are we feeling now? Feeling like C. It's got, ma oh, it's got main. Do, do I want to say what it is? What do we think it is? C. It's C. Uh, it's Python. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have literally seen this before. People putting in the curly braces, because in VI, if you hit percent, you can bounce between the two. So they put in a curly brace that commented out, so it's not actually functional. Uh, this person loves printf, so they define printf to be print. <laughs> And you know they put their def as part of their functions at the beginning of the line. And I got something to show you after the talk. <laughs> I don't know if I'm ready. <laughs> That's like Cthulhu level threat. So yeah, this actually was Python. Um, I had to go and fix this person's code. I'm like, okay, listen, you've got printing, you got the new line. It always ends up printing a new line anyway. So I'm just going to replace your printf with a lambda that does print with n equals nothing, so that you don't have spurious new lines. And then I said, don't do this ever again. So yes, in fact, it was Python. Oh my god. It's more hello world. It's English. It's got parens. Any guesses yet? Yeah? It's got parens. It might be list or scheme. Uh, we got some move to. I don't know about that one. Show. 
Oh. Got a lot of questions. Oh, oh, somebody thinks they might have it. How about if I throw that in there? Looks kind of like oh, yeah. basics. It's got line numbers. What do you think it is? Postscript. Is this logo? It's Postscript. Did you know that Postscript is a programming language? Yeah. It's a yeah. You can write a web server in Postscript. I have. So this, that's what the font is, moves this text over here, and voila, if you run it with GoScript, boom. Yes, it is a programming language. OK, what tool is this? We're going graphical now. There's nothing here. It's just a blank. So far, so far is blank. Something my name, with a my name. We, got a, we got a file menu. Does that help any? No, no, not yet. Windows. Looks like Windows. It's a, oh, you mean that has the word? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I thought that was fighting words at first. It's got the word Windows. It's got some real hard stuff to see in this screen. It's got the Linux Fest logo. I see some people guessing this one. Oh, yeah. Who wants to say it? Photoshop. Yep. Photoshop. <laughs> this is a Linux conference. Yes, it is GIMP. OK, what? command generated this output? Guess what? We're going to end up doing it ourselves. Looks kind of like it's password something something. What do we think this data is? There may be home, home, the list of home. Home directories? What do these things on the left side look like? Usernames. Usernames and user IDs? If we ran this and didn't show just the top, we would get all of this. Does this help any to, to decide exactly what it is we're pulling from? The directory is on the first level. One more hint. This was the input. It's a file. It's in Etsy. It's not the password file. It is the, it is the group file. So group colon encrypted password, colon group ID, colon members. So we want to generate this. And we're going to do it live. Okay, so this is the name of the group. The second thing is the group ID. Again, this is the format of what the stuff looks like. Group name, X. Group ID, more things. And we want to output the group name and the group ID. And incidentally, it is sorted somehow. It's not just in order of the file. So anybody want to help me figure out how I can pull out the, I'll give you a hint, the first and the third thing from this list? I heard the word, say it louder. Awk. Uh, anybody know what awk stands for? It's the three authors of the AUK programming language. Their initials were A, W, and K. I think it's in the man page, is it not? I don't have man pages installed on this Docker container. Oh well. Okay, AUK. Something goes here inside those curly braces. Who has used AUK? Who knows AUK really well? There should be zero hands up. <laughs> if you know awk really well, you should have written it in Python. I would, I would even accept Perl at this point. Um, awk is great for a number of really cool things in the command line. I would not use it for a programming language these days. There are many better tools. Who wants to give a... a well, just, awk goes to pattern, action. pattern action. Pattern mm action. -hmm. And if there is no specific pattern, then it just does the action. I'm going to give you a hint. This is the way I always do it. Yeah? Printf. I would have done printf. Maybe there's a print. But I would do printf, open print. Because I've been using log for a long, long time. Mm -hmm. Double quote, percent s, space, percent s. Double quote, comma, dollar one, dollar, comma, dollar three. And I would have done a dash capital F, colon. There because that's our field separator. Yeah, separator. That was way too fast. And I always get my fast. clock lines wrong. <laughs> 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 okay, so let's translate what we have here. Uh, we want to break each individual line up by the field separator colon. So it's going to break things up. Um, 
example. First thing goes into dollar one, second thing in dollar two, sec third thing in dollar three. So we're going to print out dollar one, dollar three. That's the first and the third thing. This right here is using percent s. That's a uh, printf style way of putting things out there. If we run that, we should see a very big long line. So what might we want to change? Add an x. Okay, we have no okay. space Whoa. between our bits. What might we want to do next? Didn't they say dollar one space? I didn't say right sentence space. I put space there. That gives us data, and if we go head ten, because the previous slide happened to have ten things in the list, uh, we do not have the same thing. Root daemon bin versus root daemon uucp. I'm gonna have to sort, sort on this. Column two. I am sorting yeah, on column two. Yeah, string, string sorting. So let's, whoops, so let's do that. What do I need to do? If I sort right now, it's going to sort them alphabetically on the first thing. We want to sort them by the last thing. Man space sort. <laughs> <laughs> man space sort would work, because except we want man sort. We went to the second key, but I don't remember. But I don't, I don't have the man pages installed in here. Uh, you want to sort? You, you want to put on the second dash key? Dash <laughs> sort dash dash help is very valid. Uh, minus k means sort on that that particular key. And then head. And so if I pipe through head, we've now got number zero, number one, ten, one hundred, one thousand, because it's sorting them ascabetically, not numerically. Um, and that list should be the same as the one we have over here. Uh, incidentally, I did the same thing. I use print because I'm lazy. So print, by default, just lets you put the things. You put a comma, then it puts a space between them. If you don't put a comma, it jumps them right together. That's Same that idea. not in the off 30 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> and the fact is, I know. I mean, yeah, like, <laughs> I was there, too. A tool like this once, there's no point. It's like, my name, what is new in off? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Go read the, like, the Gretman page. There are a billion switches we don't have. Or have now, we didn't. Okay, back to figuring out languages. What language might this be? By the way, we're on slide 55 of 100, just so you know. What language would this be? Any ideas? I'm gonna throw some more stuff in here. No, still no ideas here. Ugly, can we all agree it's ugly? I hear an idea coming. You wanna say anything? This should be a much bigger hint. Is this batch script? Is this like the oh, visual like basic? Sure looks like, it kind of does look like visual basic. It's definitely, you know, it's got win and T here. Uh, it has okay, here's our last one. Last hint. Oh. Oh. We think it's a batch script or a batch script batch. on Windows. B-A-T-C-H. What do you think I'm missing? There's going to be a little more in the next build. Any guesses? Because it looks like Hello World. You'd think Hello World could be a lot smaller in a batch script. Guess what? It's Perl. It's actually not Perl. It's actually batch and Perl. It's a polyglot. That was like a horror movie. <laughs> that was like a horror movie. So, so what this does is it's a valid batch that does enough to be able to launch this same script via Perl. Perl minus X means ignore everything until you see a shebang line. So Perl ignores everything until it gets to the user bin Perl shebang line. And then Perl reads line 16, print hello world, and end. And double underscore end in Perl means ignore everything to the rest of the end. So by a combination of you know, <laughs> go-to statements, rems to comment out stuff, this is a valid batch script that runs itself, sending itself arguments if the batch script were given arguments. This actually was something you might need to do in the old days with Perl, because Perl wasn't installed and you couldn't double click it. Like you couldn't actually put it in your path, and so you'd use Perl to bin, or sorry, yeah, Perl to bat or PL to bat that would convert all of your scripts into this format. So it's both. It's a polyglot, multiple programs in one spot. Okay, what language is this other than backslash heaven? Show a little more. It's just more backslashes, man. So many slashes. This might look a little more like sad. something. Yeah, Looks kind of like said. We got that whole, you know, s slash something slash something g for global. Last chance here. Got print. That's an actual word. 
It's Perl. <laughs> Readable. Now the question, it, it's too readable to be Perl. That is correct. <laughs> <laughs> Write once, read never, is what Perl is from a language perspective. So that is Perl, but the question is, what, what does it do? Why, why did I put this example up here, other than it looks like every other Perl unreadable? There's something special about this. Sure yeah. I'm, I'm just guessing, it's going to print itself. Got it in one. It's Perl, what does it do? It's a quine. It outputs its own source code. So if you were to you know, look at it here, if you ran it and put that output in output.txt, and then you do a SHA sum on both of them, they are the same file. It outputs its very own source code. Those are called quines. Breaking it up so you can actually understand it, um, mind you, this bottom half, no longer valid, but I put in spaces and stuff to make it more readable. This is very deceptive. You have a variable called dollar $A. The very first part you have here is you know, tick to begin a string, backslash tick. In other words, this is the tick character, not the end of the string. The entire first line up until this is actually the string itself. We set dollar underscore, which is a magical Perl variable, to dollar $A, so now we have two copies of it. We substitute all of the single ticks and all of the backslashes with whatever the thing was with a backslash in front of it, at this point your brain should be going fuzzy. And then we print out dollar $A equals that thing. And that thing is it concatenated with itself. So one of them is escaped and one of them is not. If this does not make your mind turn a little bit too mush, congratulations, you know not to learn Perl. You know about the circular quine? <laughs> yes, I do. Okay, this is Python. What's it do? It's the same thing. It's another quine. So set a variable equal to underscore percent R says give me the raw representation of the thing. We're printing out the same thing. Again, it's another quine. Prints out its own source code. How about this? What's this? It's the same answer. <laughs> what is this? It's kind of a quine, because if you run it through Python, it gives you an error <laughs> saying that the indentation is wrong, and the output of it saying the indentation is wrong is the same as the quote source code. <laughs> In Python. <laughs> this only works in Python 2 because in Python 3 it gives you the full path to the file name. So that's totally cheating. Um, you were referring to the very large quine. There is a quine out there that somebody wrote that has many, many languages, and this is the source code. It actually looks like an Ouroboros. Anyone know how many languages are in this quine? So one language feeds it to the next, to the next, to the next, and that's alphabetically. Which must have been crazy. There are 128 languages. It goes to Ruby, to Rust, to Scala, to boom, 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 all the way back to Ruby. It, I see some real, like, disgusted faces. Think of the person who managed to make this work. Uh, if you're interested in Quines, there are a bunch more out on this website, by the way. Okay, Whew, we're done with Quines. What's this? And it just looks like text, right? And it looks like more text. Just a bunch of letters. Might be some hints here now. Someone's nodding their head. Last chance, what do we think it is? Anyone have an idea what this probably is? Uh, is it cheesy? You're thinking GZ GIP, GZIP code? Some compressed code? It's actually kind of the opposite. Oh. Yeah? Uh, base 64. Why do you think it's base 64? Uh, equal signs at the end. Equal signs at the end. Base 64 takes text and it makes it bigger so that you can send it in email or other places. So it's it's 8-bit clean. Um, but if this you know if the text is too small, it has to pad it out, and the padding always happens to be equal signs at the end. So this looks like base 64. So how would we decode base 64 to find out what actually was in there? Base 64 D. Base 64 D. Or by hand. 
So we, we echo this big long string to base 64 d and we get invalid input. It's not base 64. What actually is it? Almost the same. Yeah. Half as good. <laughs> you notice anything weird about the fact? What characters are in base 64? A through Z, lowercase a through Z, plus and dat, plus and slash. There's actually a thing called base 32, which has only uppercase letters. And it's, you know, if you're like saying throwing something into DNS, not that you should, but I have, you know, DNS does not respect case. If you're not case respecting, then base 32 will work for you. So this is actually the phrase, Netscape engineers are weenies. <laughs> Who remembers that? Anybody in this room, you remember Netscape Energy? Do you remember what it was from? I don't. Microsoft had a back door oh. in front page 98. Yes. And included in it was Netscape Engineers or Weenies written backwards. Again, with the whole obfuscation thing, right? Um, there was a bug in this thing. It allowed you essentially to take over any other website that was on that computer if you knew the secret incantations of the DLL. So obfuscation has been used all over the place. And sometimes it's not a good idea. Okay, what's this string? No guesses yet? Last chance. If you know it, you know it. Kind of looks like a what web token? A Java web token. A Java web token. Why do you say that? Because of the EYJ. Because the EYJ, <laughs> and because the, there's another one somewhere. Yeah, um, oh, oh, there it is. The other EYJ. Yep. Java web, Java's web token. So you got. Big long string dot, big long string dot. And the first three characters are always EYJ for the first two components. That's because it is encoding Java, uh, Java uh, JSON. Thank you. Yeah. Losing my brain. And the you know, curlies are EYJ. So here is what this EYJ or this Java web token actually is. It's got some sort of header that tells it what kind of Java web token it is, what kind of algorithm is used. It's got some sort of payload. That payload is used presumably for authenticating somebody or conveying some information. Uh, and that's got some sort of crypto at the end that signs it. And so you make this Java web token, you sign it, it gets put in a cookie probably, or maybe in the URL when you're you know, going from website one to website two. It authenticates you, it you know, verifies that the crypto is correct, and if so, it lets you in. Okay, I'm not even gonna have a build on this one. This used to be some of the most important code on the internet. What on, you gotta wait, because I know you know this like I do. <laughs> <laughs> what code would this be? This is more or less a language. Why on earth, what was this? Any other guesses? Send mail, send mail CF. My dear friend, send mail config. This is how we used to have all of the mail in the internet routed and the rules for converting from UUCP names, you know, something bang something bang something to, you know, foo at example.com and how it would figure out when there's no host name, what do I do? When there are, you know, too many components, what do I do? So it was always something on the left, which is a pattern, some sort of transformation. And then the last part was, quote, documentation? <laughs> Didn't document diddly squat. Never really enough. Send mail CF. I can still write some of it from scratch. I still have nightmares. Okay. Oh, well, let's do more languages. What language is this? Oh, space. Oh, you're supposed to not speak yet. You got three chances left. What language is it? What language is it? It's whitespace.net, actually. It's whitespace. What, tell me about whitespace. Uh, every token in the language is represented by a whitespace character. Every token is either a space, a tab, or a new line. No, or, or uh, the other one, line P. Sorry, line P. Your characters are in line P, and anything else was comments. Any, any other character could be used well, as comments. Well, the end of the line, I guess. So, so this is the, this is essentially the, uh, you know, ASCII representation of what's in there. So it's a stack-based language. Um, if I remember right, two spaces, that's ASCII 20, indicates I'm now putting a number on the stack. The first character after that says if it's positive or negative, then you put in whatever you know, tabs or spaces in order to get the, the byte. So this stuff that's highlighted uh, puts the word hello 
it, or sorry, <laughs> no it doesn't. It gets the letter H. This is how much work it is. Puts the letter H onto the stack. Uh, following after that is you know zero A, zero nine, zero A. So line feed uh, tab, line feed means print the thing to the screen. So the first line of this more or less just says print out the letter H. And so this is actually hello world in white space. Not very friendly. Okay. If you know it, don't say it yet. What is this? Any idea? Got a bunch of numbers. TLS, I know what that is, right? Do I? That's that crypto thing that makes sure all of our web pages are secure. Uh, some foo something, what was that? Certificate? Uh, this is not a certificate, no. Got a lot more hints in oh. here. Oh, I hear groans, yes. excellent. Let's go one more chance. This is an SMTP transaction. This is what you can actually do. Like if you tell net to Gmail's web server port 25, this is what SMTP looks like. It says a banner. And these codes, by the way, they look kind of like HTTP codes, right? 400s, 200s, you know. These, it didn't come from HTTP first. People were doing that a long time ago. So all these 200s are good things. This is a bunch of information it's sending back. It says, hey, I support pipelining, and this is the biggest file you can send to me. Uh, if you want to do start TLS and up level to do you know, actual crypto, you can. So it'll say, hi, I'm barred at example.com, or sorry.org. I'm sending mail from this address to this address. Here's the data. You would then put in all of the headers, the subject line, the to, the from, you know, attachments, whatever, and you literally end with a dot. Oh, the old days, where we just end things with a dot. And it took the email and voila, it sends it off. This is the last slide. This is very topical. Does anyone recognize what this is from? Go ahead. Is it me? Yeah, I, I think you had your hand up first. Me. But what is it from me? Do you recognize why this is important all of a sudden? No. Uh, no, I don't think so. I'm going to highlight a little bit more. This was from a popular library oh, I heard about that, that uh, somebody added the stuff that is colored in here. Uh, it's the, the XZ, yeah. The XZ. XZ. It's, it's the, the XZ XZ. bug. So this the is auto tools. So this is auto tools. So auto tools, you take. Uh, pretty, you know, humanly readable stuff. It compiles a really big bash script. The bash script is much harder to read. It's got lots of variables with lots of underscores and variables within variables. Um, and it becomes kind of difficult to read. Um, and so people who, you know, just look at the output might not really give it a lot of security thought. So what this does, looking just like the rest of the surrounding stuff, um, which is why it was, you know, easy to sneak in. Um, this makes stuff that looks like it's doing said, you know, replacing. This really, to me, looks like I'm replacing carriage return line feeds. But, but it's not. Said, when it just has a pattern of r backslash n, doesn't do that. doesn't have any actual thing to do. Said just turns into cat. So that's actually more like cat. So it's catting some make file, piping it to an eval of some other variable. This variable is way down here at the bottom. This variable is some sort of translation of tab to space, space to backslash, and dash to underscore, or something like that. So it's piping these things through. It's really hard to understand what this does. It turns out to be equivalent to take this file that I added to the repository five years ago, more like a year ago, that is supposed to be some corrupted, compressed file. Take that file, cat it, translate the characters inside it now turning into the malicious file that is decryptable, and pipe it to XZ, the decrypt program. So it takes something that was intentionally broken, that is malicious, and obfuscated, de-obfuscate it, decompress it, and then it runs it later on. So as you build this package, you're running third-party untested code. And this ended up being installed into libraries that could be picked up by other tools, for example, SSH. And what clever things they did is they made it so there was a hard-coded key that would always be trusted. So if you authenticate it to an SSH server with a compromised SSH binary, and you had that key, you could log in. So obfuscations up so many levels of the stack. Your homework assignment is to go and read more about how that worked.
It's really quite ingenious. That is the talk today. Thank you so much for being so interactive, for coming up with all the days, for, for not saying it when you knew it, for recognizing sun mail and, and having the right look of, oh my God, I think I'm gonna feel sick. Um, <laughs> that's how you should, also with Pearl. Um, if there are any questions, have at. I, I guess I went and mentioned the white space. Mm -hmm. I met one of the two British guys who did the port to the .NET framework back in 2001. They ported Whitespace to .NET? Whitespace.NET, yeah. Oh my Whites, goodness. Yeah, or WS Sharp, I forget what they <laughs> called it. But they said it was surprisingly difficult. <laughs> That's all. But and they, so satisfying, yet important. But Very accomplished. <laughs> Any other questions? Awesome, thank you for going on this ride, this was great.